Right, sorry, Andre. Hey, bro. Oh, oh, I'm in Andre. Listen, we're working on this Folgers copy, and we wanted to know how you think a black guy would say good morning. Hmm. Probably just like that. I may have to be urban at work, but I'm still going to need my family to be black. Not black-ish, but black. So, I was doing a little bit of research on you, mm -hmm. and I noticed that you were a part of you know, America's Next Top Model mm -hmm. So, that's completely different spectrum <laughs> of the television industry. So, how do you go from America's Next Top Model mm -hmm. to Blackish? Um, well, Tyra's my best friend, the friend of Sweet Kids. I will. <laughs> I will. I will. I'm with Sweet Kids, and we mm -hmm. were in development on something else, some little project. We were like, you know what, we should do TV, and we started talking about some stuff. And, came with an idea and it was really just a you know labor of love that turned out to go for work. And do you feel like it, it stuck with you as you began to venture off into other projects? Um, I learned something from it. Like I've done drama, I've done comedy, I've done sketch, and I've done reality. And I'm like reality, you reverse engineer, like you shoot stuff, and then you feel like, what kind of story can we tell? Them? Right. So I think that was a good sort of learning tool as a writer to sort of like say, sometimes the footage might not match up. Like, well, what can we make out? So would you ever do reality? Um, maybe I have something now thinking about doing. Um, I do think that I, I would do it. I would mine would be more of a narrative, but it's something that have like a story to it. Um, but right now, like the show is is the day to day. The, the black issues my passion. And then we also heard that you have some upcoming film projects, like mm -hmm. Barbershop Three, possibly Four. Um, how is that working? I don't even know how you guys know about four. Like I just found out about it yesterday. So that's <laughs> it's out there. Crazy. Um, it's it's been great. You know what I'm saying I'm doing. Uh, I have a trip with a girls trip that I'm doing at Universal. Okay. Um, Will Packer and Malcolm have got together again. I you know, get a chance to work with Will's my boy. I'm producing another movie with Will. Um, actually with the little girl from our show, Kayla. She's so good. It's, um, it's a really really great project. It's called Little. And I'm um, writing it with my friend Tracy Oliver. Tracy Oliver's writing it and producing it. Um, and it's kind of like a like a movie like Big or you know that type of thing where she someone plays her and they don't really have it. They never really had a childhood and through a wish they get uh, sent back to their childhood and she becomes you know Kayla. Um, Barbershop and doing Shaft. Um, with a really good friend of mine, Alex Barno, who I'm actually also writing. Um, a uh, really funny Ice Cube movie called, um, tentatively called White Guy Problems, about a white, a white guy who has, kind of like me can, you know, gets pushed over it, he bumps his head and starts hearing the voice of Ice Cube and his head is kind of as his inner model. Wow. Um, and I'm writing uh, Good Times, which is really, really a passion project for me. Who's going to be playing Shaft with the door? Um, we have a plan to be Samuel Jackson reprising that role that he did. No before, but it's going to be he and his son. It's going to be a buddy comedy. I'm saying that kind of takes place modern day, um, and he has to sort of his son is totally a bit strange and kind of growing up different than him. And they come together, you know, make for a really fun and, and exciting. So that next generation. Yes. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you prefer like the comedy? I do prefer comedy. Okay. I do. We're, Good Times is more of a dramedy. Okay. Um, but I do really, really, I mean, that's where I see myself right now. Good Times is the thing that's closest to this show. Okay. Because it is a normal you know, project. Right. You know, um, and that family was so important to like what we were about and what we were doing. So, you know, I, I knew I didn't want to do a spoof for the style. was really Scott Rodin producing, was really supportive. It really is an honest, like, portrayal of what that family who is now grown up and looking back on their life. It's going through and you kind of see the parallels between, you know, modern day Chicago and Chicago then. Um, and working on Barbershop, I really got into Chicago. And, um, I think it's an amazing city, but it, that that city is sort of a, you know, an, an allegory of how something can crumble on itself if you don't watch it. And it, it can, you know, also be looked at as if we don't look at it in the correct way. That can be every city in the country if we don't watch ourselves.